this video is going to be about ATP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate, and it is a molecule that our cells use for energy very commonly. And so there are three kinds of work that ATP is typically used uh, to carry out. So the first of those kinds is going to be chemical work. And so we know that we have exergonic and endergonic reactions, and we also know that endergonic reactions require energy in order to be able to uh, take place. And so where we get that energy from is from ATP. So our cells will use ATP to power these endergonic reactions and get them to take place. So moving on to transport work, we saw um, an example of this in the video on active transport. So we can use ATP and the energy that's stored in its bonds to power the transport of something against its concentration gradient, for example, using the sodium-potassium pump. So finally, the last form of work that we uh, use ATP for is mechanical work. So we can see this in um, flagella and cilia. So flagella are going to use ATP in order to generate that movement to help bacteria and other kinds of cells actually move. So now that we know the kinds of work that we can do ATP with, we can look at how ATP is actually capable of um, making these processes take place. So one way that it can do this is through energy coupling. And this one is really important in uh, doing chemical work. So in energy coupling, what's going to happen is we're going to hydrolyze a molecule of ATP. So in every molecule of ATP, we have the adenosine, which is a nucleotide, and then the TP stands for triphosphate. So we're going to have three phosphate groups on the molecule of ATP. And so the bonds in between these phosphate groups are very high energy bonds because these phosphate groups are all negatively charged, so they're wanting to push away from one another, but these bonds are holding them together, and so that makes that bond very high energy. So when we hydrolyze one of these bonds, we basically break it, and now this phosphate group can come off, and we get a DP plus a phosphate group. So now we've released a lot of energy. And so if the amount of energy that's released by hydrolyzing a molecule of ATP is larger than the delta G for an endergonic reaction, which should be a positive number, so greater than zero, then we can combine ATP hydrolysis with this endergonic reaction to make those two reactions overall be exergonic. And so then they would be able to take place. So again, just to emphasize that, if the amount of energy released by the hydrolysis of ATP is larger than the amount of energy that's required to uh, get an endergonic reaction to take place, then those two reactions can be coupled so that overall they are exergonic and that reaction will move forward. And so a lot of the times, um, when you have this hydrolysis of ATP, this phosphate group will get translated onto some other molecule, and so that molecule would be said uh, to be phosphorylated. But that's not always the case, but it does occur sometimes, especially when you're working with proteins. So now moving on to once we've hydrolyzed this molecule of ATP, how do we replenish our supply of ATP? So we'll put ATP up here, and then ADP plus a phosphate down here. So these two forms of ATP are constantly in circulation with each other. So if we have ADP and a phosphate group, we're going to add energy from a catabolic process, which we know releases energy, to then uh, power this um, ATP formation and rejoin this phosphate group to the ADP to make ATP. So then from ATP, when we hydrolyze it to ADP and the phosphate, we're going to be releasing energy. So just to review, on this side, we have to add energy to get ADP to go back to ATP. And then when it's hydrolyzed, we release energy that we can then use to power other processes like chemical work, transport work, or mechanical work. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true regardless of what biology course you're taking. However, the material we covered in this video is specifically referencing material covered in Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building, and you can schedule a free 30-minute appointment to have one-on-one -on -one tutoring online, or you can stop by during any of our business hours. For more information about the services we provide, you can go to our website at www.baylor.edu tutoring. Thank you.